Hi everybody, welcome to the Tuesday edition of Source 16 News. I'm Eddie Owen. Thanks for joining us. Well, lots of kids got to enjoy another snow day as many area schools closed for a second day due to winter weather. Schools weren't the only ones affected from the snow. Freedom Waste in Hopkinsville delayed trash pickup routes a whole day. They'll be running routes one day late for the rest of the week and traffic school classes were also canceled statewide. Salt trucks were out in full force. Crews in most counties were treating or spot treating to clear roadways of snow. Some even plowing was needed along some highways in counties along the Ohio River. Transportation Cabinet spokesman Keith Todd said there's some concern about the potential for refreezing on bridges and overpasses as temperatures are expected to drop into the mid-teens overnight. He says crews will continue to spread salt and calcium chloride as appropriate, but the low temperatures will limit the impact of ice fighting chemicals during the nighttime hours. And for all of you parents and students, as of news time, we had not received word of any school closings for tomorrow. Well, speaking of salt trucks, a Webster County Highway Department employee and his passenger were injured this morning when his salt truck overturned on Kentucky 132. According to state police, 27 year old Jacob Bumpus was driving a 2000 international dump truck in the city limits of Dixon around 740 when the engine stalled as he was traveling down a hill that caused the dump truck to run off the road and overturn on the driver's side. Bumpus and his passenger, 28-year-old Derek Parrish of Dixon, were transported by ambulance to Methodist Hospital in Henderson for treatment. Meanwhile, icy road conditions are being blamed for a wreck on Interstate 24 in Christian County yesterday morning that injured three Missouri residents. The Sheriff's Department reports the single vehicle wreck occurred around 510 Monday morning on I-24, about four miles east of Oak Grove as the 52-year-old Scott City, Missouri driver was traveling east. Deputies say the driver lost control of his pickup truck due to the icy road conditions and spun off the south side of the road into a ditch where the truck overturned. The driver and two Cape Girardeau residents were transported by ambulance to Gateway Medical Center in Clarksville for injury assessment. Well, Oak Grove Police Chief Milton Perry is back on the job. Perry's attorney, Rick Bowling, told Source 16 that Perry was placed on administrative suspension during a two-month investigation by Kentucky State Police. Bowling said, among other allegations, someone from within the department accused Perry of taking evidence from the evidence room. But the investigation later proved that to be completely false, as Perry has never handled that evidence before. Kentucky State Police Detective Steve Bryan presented Perry's case to the Christian County Grand Jury last Friday. Bowling said the jury found that Perry did not violate any laws and criminal charges were not necessary. Today, the administration, the administrative suspension was dropped and Perry was reinstated as Oak Grove police chief. Well, a Clarksville man who was previously convicted of complicity to murder was officially sentenced in Christian County Circuit Court today. Judge John Atkins sentenced Kenneth Hudson to 25 years in prison after he was found guilty by a jury for the May 30th, 2008 shooting death of 18-year-old Clarksville resident Shayara Alcevedo Olivaria, who was found dead near Carter and Burns Roads in Oak Grove. Judge Atkins also denied a motion made by Hudson's public defender, Lucian Sisney, for a new trial. After sentencing, Judge Atkins spoke to Hudson about his actions during the trial. Your behavior is utterly reprehensible. And I've prosecuted a lot of murder cases and I've presided over several more. And I don't believe I've ever had a case troubling me as much as yours. Meanwhile, Hudson's co-defendants Jordan Young and Derek James also appeared together in Christian Circuit Court, where Judge Atkins continued their cases until March 9th. Christian County Fiscal Court conducted routine business during its first meeting of the new year and term. Magistrates unanimously approved the Christian County Sheriff's Office 2011 budget for over $2.9 million. The new budget also reflects a $150,000 allowance to go toward fuel, which is a $50,000 increase from last year's allowance. In other action, magistrates approved a deceased farm animal disposal assistance program agreement. Provides additional clear uh, 
being awarded this, it's just a matter of you all uh, authorizing me to sign this document agreement there. We're going to be able to get a $7,500 grant to help us uh, with this program. Fiscal Court also approved adopting the Christian County Jail and Restricted Custody Center Policy and Procedure Manuals and Inmate Rules and Regulations. In other business, magistrates postponed taking action on a Kentucky USA encroachment application until the next Fiscal Court meeting. In fact, they've already done some things out there. So they, they said that they would uh, clean up some uh, items that were out above ground in our uh, Christian County Jail. And on our right of way. They gave us those assurances. You can see from this letter, he said, you know, they wanted to do it. The Chuck and Save Park, you know, it has not been done. As of the middle of last week, it has not been done. Then it'd be my suggestion that we just pass on it until they do what they said they would do. Magistrates then approved nominating five people to serve three-year terms on the Little River Water Quality Consortium and two people to serve two-year terms on the Christian County Extension District Board. Judge Tribble then read a lighthearted letter from the sister of the late Bill Bruce, Debbie Bruce, about the former magistrate. The next fiscal court meeting is scheduled for Tuesday morning, January 25th at 8.30. Well, the Mayfield Graves County Habitat for Humanity is a little bit richer thanks to a donation from the Tennessee Valley Authority yesterday. A TVA representative donated $2,000 for building energy efficient and affordable homes in Graves County. The homes are net zero designs, meaning they nullify any carbon emissions. The designs are sketched by architecture students at the University of Kentucky. Well, a 21-year-old Beech Creek man was injured when he crashed his car in Muhlenberg County this morning. Adam Robertson was driving on Kentucky 176 around 8.30 when state police say about one mile east of Greenville, he lost control of his car on the wet roadway, ran off the road, and hit a ditch and driveway tile. Robertson was transported by ambulance to Muhlenberg Community Hospital for treatment. The first woman has filed for the 2011 Kentucky statewide election, seeking the office of Kentucky State Treasurer. Republican Casey Crosby, a three-term Lexington Fayette Urban City Council member, submitted her paperwork today. Crosby said in a release, Kentuckians have made it clear they expect their leaders to make effective and efficient use of their tax dollars, keeping spending low. The office is more than just a requirement of the Constitution. And I believe Kentuckians should expect more of their treasurer. Crosby went on to say she'll work to restore significance to the position and deliver value to the taxpayer while continuing to hold spending in check. Crosby, also a graduate of the University of Kentucky, and her husband Scott have three children, ages 11, 9, and 7. Well, in case you missed last night's 10 o'clock and this morning's news, a small crowd turned out last night for the first of five community conversations at North Drive Middle School hosted by Hopkinsville Mayor Dan Kemp. Before the meet and greet started, Kemp gave a brief overview on how the city is doing and state Hopkinsville is doing very well. And um, while our unemployment rate is still at 10%, it has declined from 13% this month last year. So that's certainly moving in the right direction and we're seeing uh, people being hired back at uh, the major employers. We've had some good announcements this past fall on some expansions at local plants. And we hope to have some uh, announcements later on this year about further expansions and uh, growth and employment opportunities in Hopkinsville and Christian County. Meanwhile, members of city council and representatives from all city departments and several agencies, including New Wave Communications, were also on hand to meet one-on-one -on -one with residents. New Wave General Manager Larry Hoyle says area residents are always welcome to stop by. Now, but you know, I want everybody to know that you can come by our office anytime. We're always there, uh, and you know, from eight to six and six o'clock in the evening. So come on by the office. We're always there, and we got a lot of associates up front to uh, answer your questions and have a cup of coffee on us. Come on by. Two residents who attended the meet and greet praised officials for their hard work. Every time I've ever had any kind of concern, um, I have gone to city council or I've gone to the planning commission 
and they have always complied with what I have requested. In our neighborhood, we had a curb that didn't conform to Federal Disabilities Act, and I contacted the um, street department, and within six weeks, or it may have been even less, we had a brand new curb, which was great because we have lots of children in our neighborhood who ride bikes, and it's just safer. However, another local woman who attended the event expressed her concerns. Yeah, I have a lot of concerns about our safety of our children and everyone in our community, actually. I feel that there are a lot of crooked people in our community, and we need to get rid of the crooked ones and get the straight ones that are going to stand up for what's best for us. The next scheduled meeting will take place Monday evening, March 14th, at Millbrook Elementary School from 515 until 7 o'clock. A 52-year-old Hopkinsville man is facing a slew of meth-related charges after a meth lab was found on Quisenberry Lane over the weekend. Wayne Vowell of Penn Oak Drive was taken into custody at his home and charged with manufacturing methamphetamine, possession of and tampering with anhydrous ammonia with intent to manufacture meth, theft by unlawful taking anhydrous ammonia with intent to manufacture meth, and other meth-related offenses. A Christian County Sheriff's Department report released today said the property owner called the Emergency Communication Center Saturday night around 1030 regarding a strong chemical odor coming from a shop building at 3255 Quisenberry Lane. After getting permission for a search, deputies reportedly found numerous items consistent with manufacturing meth, including three containers of anhydrous ammonia, lether, pseudofedadrine, excessive amounts of meth, and other items. Vowell was booked into the Christian County Jail.